Good evening, every hello. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Thank you all for coming. It's wonderful to see a full room of people here tonight. And before we get on to our business of talking about housing, um, this is a official planning board meeting, so I'm going to call the meeting to order. And I'm also going to read the role of our planning board members. Um, myself, John Christ, I am present. Uh, Rebecca Hansen. Um, Phil Lamoureux, yep. uh, Neil McIver, uh, Mike Ahern, yep. Mark Sturgeon, Here. Susan Wood, Here. and our alternates, Zach Terrell, uh, Michael Bouchard, Ready. and Peter Julia. All right, and with that, um, we're going to move on to our discussion of housing this evening. And so as you all know, and while you're here, we're in the process of a um, housing study here in Plymouth, and this is one of our first of a couple of public engagement opportunities, and it's, again, fantastic to see so many of you here tonight. And so I'm going to kind of try to quickly move on and pass off to our staff and our um, 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 consultant, Barrett Planning Group. Um, before we do, though, um, <clears throat> just a couple of things to note. Uh, Hope, hopefully you all signed in and got yourself checked in and put your dot on the map and all that, yeah? And so after that, um, bathrooms, if you're curious, are out and around there. Um, exits, if you have to exit quickly, um, are right down here. And also, if you have any questions along the way, there are a bunch of us with tags on that you can um, track down and we'll be happy to answer any questions or clarify things along the way. Um, so. With that being said, I will just introduce, um, to, you just heard from the um, planning board uh, as we took role, um, several members of the planning board and members of the um, community have gotten together as a housing committee to steer this project. And I just want to acknowledge all of them, um, most of whom are here this evening. Um, a few of us on the planning board, uh, myself, uh, Mike Ahern, um, Susan Wood, and I think that's it. Um, in addition, we have Patty Biederman, Brian Chalmers, um, Matt Yetton, Bruce Wiggett, and Ryan Eisenhower on the last one could not be here this evening. Um, in addition, um, we have our town staff um, and the planning department, including Joseph Perez, the community planner, and June Hammond Rowan, the planning and development director, um, who also could not be here this evening. Um, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to Joseph um, to introduce our planning and the agenda for the evening. Excellent. Thank you, John. Uh, yeah, so I'd like to introduce, we're really appreciative and we're really glad that we have the opportunity to work with Barrett Planning Group. Uh, so we have Judy Barrett, we have Alexis, and we have Tyler here from the, the firm, and they're, uh, they've just been, you know, so great, and we really appreciate them helping to get this going. So a little bit about the agenda for tonight. We're going to start off with a presentation, and then we're going to transition into sort of a breakout group discussion. Um, so that's that's the purpose of these roundtables here. Uh, following that, we'll have some questions that will be reported out, so sort of following up from the discussions of the breakout groups. And then we'll have a quick discussion of what are the next steps. So what's next in this process? As John mentioned, it's, a, it's an ongoing process, and this is a, a first key milestone, but it's definitely not the last. Uh, so we'll, we'll go over that at that time. And then at the end of the meeting, we have questions and comments, so if you have uh, a question or comment that you want to ask throughout the duration of the meeting, we just encourage you to write that down so you remember it and then can uh, come up to the microphone and ask it during the question and comment period at the, uh, at the end after the breakout discussion. So with that, I will turn it over to Judy Barrett uh, for the next portion of the presentation. Thank you so much, Joseph. Can you all hear me? So I'm Judy Barrett, and uh, as you've already been introduced, Alexis and Tyler are with me. Uh, we're a planning firm. We're kind of a small firm. There are three main things that we do. We do a lot of work in comprehensive plans. We do work with zoning and affordable housing, which is a, a, you know, a large reason that why we're here is, is around housing policy. And we're really delighted to see the turnout at this meeting. This is not that common sometimes with housing meetings, so uh, welcome. I just wanted to explain a little bit about our scope and kind of what the background is on this project. And I'll be turning it all over to Alexis in a minute, who's going to do the kind of substantive presentation. But um, how we got here, the state of New Hampshire committed $100 million from ARPA funds, American Recovery uh, Plan Act, 
to increase the supply of workforce housing um, in, in New Hampshire. And there are kind of three sort of major pots in which that money has gone. One is for capital projects. Um, that is just kind of an essential piece of getting housing built. Um, another is municipal incentive grants, which is really kind of working directly with communities on production. And then the third piece is this municipal planning and zoning grant, also known as the Housing Opportunity Program. And your town successfully applied to the HOP program for the kind of three main components of that program. So communities could go after one piece or three or two. And your town said, we really kind of want to look at this whole issue. Um, and so the first part is what we're working on now, which is the housing needs analysis. And we, we just find when we work on these projects that you can learn a fair amount about a community from data, but you never learn the whole story. It's really, we learn it from you. So that's a lot of what we want to talk about tonight is kind of what housing needs there are in this community as you see them as residents and business owners and so forth. The next phase of the project is called a regulatory audit. So based on kind of what we learn about the community's sense of its needs, we're going to look at your zoning ordinance um, and try to understand to what extent is the ordinance helpful or not in addressing the needs in the community. And out of that effort, um, we will be making recommendations to the planning board about things that perhaps could be done to make the zoning ordinance um, uh, more amicable, if you will, to housing production. And then the third piece is based on direction from the planning board, um, once they review our recommendations, what does the planning board want us to work on in terms of regulatory development? In other words, potential amendments to your zoning ordinance. Um, so that's kind of the, the main piece of what, uh, what we're doing here. So just a little bit about what a housing needs assessment is. When we come into a community, and we've already met with some of you, so the questions that you see up here may be sort of familiar. Um, but we try to understand, like, who's here? Like, who is living in your community? And, of course, when you're a college town, you have a very interesting mix of people, um, in, you know, in your community. And you have students living here as, as well as uh, everyone else. Understanding what the housing inventory is in your community and how many homes do you have? And we try to use the word home instead of housing unit because where people live is their home, no matter what kind of housing unit it is. So how many homes do you have and what kind of homes are they and where are they located? So there's a geographic component as planners. We love maps and we love geography and we try to figure out like where's development happened in this community. How much of the housing that you have now sort of occurred organically? And by that I mean kind of built a long time ago before zoning came along and started to sort of dictate where things could take place. What's new in your housing and is that housing in good condition, the older housing, how, how is it holding up? Um, why do people come here? And conversely, why do they leave? What does it cost to buy or rent uh, a home in Plymouth today? And how many markets are comp competing for the same supply of units that you have? We just find this very often in our housing work that, um, that there's a supply and it's kind of happened over any number of reasons, sometimes a development under zoning, sometimes it was there a long time ago. But as communities um, grow and change, there are more types of markets that want that housing. And at some point there's this tension between who wants it and what's available. So we're trying to understand who wants the homes that you have in your community today? And to what extent is competition perhaps helping some people and not others? And then what needs are not being met by ordinary operations of the market? So those are kind of our main big questions when we do a housing needs assessment. Um, there is a timeline governing our work. Um, the town's timeline actually under the grant is a little bit longer than ours, although I don't think we'll be disappearing very soon. But the needs assessment is, is happening now and will continue to evolve until the end of June. Um, before we reach the end of June, we'll be giving kind of a draft report to the Housing Committee and the Planning Board. Here are our findings. Here's what we, here's what we heard and here's what we see. Um, and this is what we've learned. Concurrently, we're looking at the ordinance to try to piece together what you're telling us or needs, how does the ordinance work, so that by the end of June, the planning board really has kind of two key pieces from us. It's the needs assessment and it's the review of your zoning. The planning board then gets to decide, well, of the, everything the consultants have said, what do we really want to tackle here? Because there's probably all kinds of things that we could do. Um, with the direction from the planning board, we would start then preparing ordinance amendments and we have to kind of have that done by late fall. 
because of your town meeting cycle here. So, you know, we'll, we'll be around even beyond uh, December, but that's kind of our main timeline. So that's the project time that we're working with. So we have started to kind of try to understand your community, talk to people, uh, looking at data, meeting with the housing committee and so forth. And I want Alexis at this point to kind of review for you kind of what planning has taken place around housing in this community because we're looking at that to understand what's been done, what hasn't been done, uh, are things that haven't been done yet relevant still, or, or are we, do we need to be looking at new things? So we'll kind of do that overview for you and then she will eventually walk you through how we're going to do the breakout sessions with you folks. So Alexis, I think this is your, your cue. <coughs> Thank you, Judy, and thank you, everybody, for being here. Can you hear me okay? This doesn't really adjust very easily, and I'm short, so, I'm short. yeah. <laughs> All right, there we go. Um, so I'm going to go over, as Judy mentioned, some kind of relevant planning efforts that we are looking at to kind of inform us both of uh, what the town has done so far and also regionally. Um, and you'll see on the next slide that we're looking, uh, you know, at uh, one plan is from 20 years ago, and it's interesting to see how much in that plan is still relevant today. So the three kind of primary planning efforts that we're looking at right now in this phase of our research is uh, a housing needs assessment that the town um, conducted 20 years ago in 2003. Um, and uh, then we're also looking at the town's 2018 uh, master plan. And then lastly, we're looking at the uh, Lakes Region Housing Needs Assessment, which is currently in draft form. So we're, you know, it's, that plan is not complete yet, but there is a draft available online. And so those are kind of uh, some of the documents that we've used to kind of help us get our, our feet wet and understanding uh, what, what the, the housing needs and challenges and opportunities are in your community. So I'm just going to give you a little bit of brief background of, about each of those uh, plans. And I know, I, I know the screen is kind of small, so for, um, if you're having a hard time reading some of the smaller text, rest assured we will make sure these slides are all online as well. Um, there's a great project page I'll be showing you how to get to at the end of the evening, and we'll make sure um, if, you, if you're not able to see any of this that you'll have access. Um, but so first I'm going to talk about the 2003 housing needs assessment. And so there were some major conclusions, and you know, we wanted to italicize there in 2003, because some are still relevant and some have, there have been changes since that, that plan was um, conducted. So uh, one of the major conclusions was that, was that there's more housing needed to support economic growth. Um, second major finding was that off-campus student housing puts a strain on housing availability. And you'll see there's a star there, I'll explain why in a moment. Um, the third major finding was that housing has become increasingly unaffordable, and again, this was 20 years ago. Uh, in addition, job growth has been in lower wage industries, causing a growing mismatch between your local economy and the housing stock available to people who work in your community. Um, and then uh, the last kind of major finding was there's a need for more income restricted housing, um, despite Plymouth representing a large share of the region's subsidized housing. And that also has two asterisks, and I'll explain why. Uh, so with regard to the off-campus student housing, um, at the time of this study, 20 years ago, the college population had actually been increasing and was projected to stabilize. So they weren't predicting a decrease in enrollment. So I think there was, um, you know, kind of more concern about what that would look like if it keeps growing. Um, and then uh, the, the next caveat is for that fourth bullet about the need for more income restricted housing. Despite Plymouth representing a large share of the region's subsidized housing, this again was 20 years ago, um, that is actually kind of a different defined region than the, uh, the regional housing needs assessment. So those are just some kind of caveats with that uh, 20 year old plan, but it is interesting to see how much is still relevant today. Uh, also looking at your master plan, so the way this was structured um, in terms of the implementation portion of the master plan, uh, there were 11 broad goals uh, that each had supporting strategies and actions. Um, and so kind of two of the relevant ones that I wanted to point out, the housing goal, very broad again with a lot of uh, specific actions that were under it, but the housing goal is to encourage the development and maintenance of safe and affordable housing for residents of all ages. So that was the master plan goal in 2018. And then the land use goal, uh, maintain the uniqueness and uh, build upon the strengths of each area of Plymouth. And the reason I wanted to include that is in a lot of the uh, kind of smaller interviews that we've conducted so far, uh, people do uh, feel very passionately about kind of the unique areas of your community. And so we really wanted to kind of 
acknowledge that, that we hear that, and that was also acknowledged in your 2018 master plan. Um, in terms of the, the vision, I just wanted to read this to you because I thought it really captured so nicely a lot of what we've heard in the uh, members of your community we've had a chance to speak with so far. So this is the vision from that master plan. Uh, Plymouth is a place that has it all. The advantages of small town friendliness, the energy and culture of a college town, a vibrant and walkable downtown, outdoor recreation, and a location that offers easy access to commerce and service, as well as the Lakes region and the White Mountains. And then it continued, and this is uh, this bulleted list, it so resonates what we've heard so far. Um, characteristics of Plymouth that are important to maintain include uh, a mix of downtown and rural settings, locally owned downtown businesses, walkable downtown, uh, easy access to and from uh, Plymouth, from other communities, uh, sense of community and small town feel, natural beauty and agriculture, um, outdoor recreation and trails, connection to Plymouth State University and its excellent education system. So um, as I mentioned, we're also looking at uh, a very recent plan, uh, the 2023 uh, Lakes Region Housing Needs Assessment. So a couple of caveats. As I mentioned, this is in draft. This plan is in draft form. It's still available online if you are interested in reviewing it. Um, another caveat is that Plymouth is one of 31 communities that the study is looking at. And it does a good job of looking at some kind of community specific factors, um, but it is also a regional needs assessment. So that's kind of another caveat to keep in mind. However, many of the regional trends that are noted in this plan uh, match some of the things that we've heard about your community. So um, some of those kind of key findings uh, in the Lakes region and really beyond, the housing market is currently very tight uh, and affordable housing is a, is a particular challenge. Um, so there are over 2,200 income restricted housing units in the Lakes region. So again, that's 31 communities. Um, and about 10% of those income restricted units are in Plymouth. Uh, the Lakes region population continues to grow and tends to be older than most of the state. Um, the region's employment base has increased about 10% in roughly the uh, 10 year period from 2009 to 2019. But this really jumped out at me because it matches what the 2003 uh, needs assessment said for Plymouth was that a lot of the increase in um, employment opportunities is in um, you know kind of uh, lower lower paying jobs that are not um, it, there's a mismatch between what people are earning and what they can afford. Um, so the plan kind of concludes with this uh, really, you know, uh, salient finding, I think, that really nails a lot of what we've heard so far. So uh, through several versions of the Lakes Region Housing Needs Assessment, stretching back nearly two decades, the message has been consistent that there continues to be a need for more housing throughout the region. Not one size fits all housing, not just single family homes, but a mix of housing options. Economically, our communities and region need housing that is affordable to the couples and young families who are growing our workforce so we can have people working in the hospitality industry, construction trades, and as teachers or caregivers in addition to engineers and nurses. Uh, so that's kind of the, the key finding that in the plan they're saying, you know, when they've conducted these um, needs assessments for the region, it keeps coming back to the, that primary finding. So those are the, the plans that we're looking at to kind of help inform um, our broad understanding. And then uh, Judy mentioned that we're doing this needs assessment that the project timeline we're slated to work on through June. So just a little uh, caveat here that what I'm going to show you in terms of data right now is very, very preliminary. We are just at the beginning of our kind of uh, deep data analysis. And as I'm sure you have heard and are not, not surprised by, it's also a bit challenging to do some of the demographic data analysis in your community uh, because so much of the population that's counted in the census um, are, are uh, PSU students. So we'll talk about that and kind of where we're at right now. So I had mentioned that we conducted some interviews just to kind of help us learn about your community. Uh, and so the housing steering committee that um, uh, John introduced at the beginning, they helped uh, circulate a sign up opportunity and then people who received that were able to kind of share. So, so through this process, so far we've been able to connect with uh, nearly 40 community members who had some interest in housing or experience with housing in your community. Um, so 
the, the common themes that we've heard so far, and I don't want to go into too much detail because we want to hear what you all bring to the table tonight, but common themes, um, rising housing costs and a mismatch with area wages, uh, the very limited housing availability, uh, relations with PSU, uh, infrastructure challenges and limitations and how hard that can make it to develop housing. Um, zoning, uh, you know, for better or for worse, concerns people have, things people like about it, uh, and then de development potential. And then the strengths of the community. We heard so much um, about the things that people just love about Plymouth. Um, so those are the things that we've heard, and we we're, we're want to hear tonight what other themes come out from your discussions that you'll have in breakout groups. So I'm going to get into a little bit of some of the kind of data, and I'll try to be as quick as I can because I want to make sure we get to the breakout groups on time. But um, as I, I mentioned, you know, doing a demographic analysis for your community is a bit challenging because um, the, uh, the, the number of uh, your population counted in the decennial census, um, roughly half of that is made up of uh, PSU students. So that's pretty significant. Um, so we are able to kind of drill down a little bit depending on what data source we are looking at because of that population, um, of that student population, um, the, the students who live on campus in, in dorms, which is considered group quarters, they are not counted in your community's household data. So we are able to look at household specific data and that's quite helpful. However, that does include students who um, might be living in off-campus housing but it's also important to know that those are still members of your community. So, um, you know, it's kind of a, a give and take and figuring out how to look at the, um, the data as, as best we can. Um, so one thing, we wanted to kind of look at the, the makeup of households and being able to look at family households in particular because that will remove um, uh, students who are living in off-campus housing so we can look at the family households a bit as well to kind of see what that population looks like. But one thing that we found um, that's interesting so far is that when you look at Plymouth and the, the county and um, New Hampshire, uh, the, the kind of breakdown of non-family households, which in your community is probably a lot of, of students, um, is not that far off from non-family households in the county or the state at large. The, the reason for um, those non-family households is going to be different in your community. A lot of it is, is uh, the student population. Um, but one, you know, big shift in the family households uh, in Plymouth, there's, um, you know, a much, uh, I would say, a lower share of married couple families um, compared to the county and um, New Hampshire. <coughs> So we also wanted to look at um, race and ethnicity. And um, so the, the column there that is total population, that is including um, uh, the student population. And then the column on the right, the PSU population, we wanted to kind of pull that out to really see like how much are your demographics influenced by the presence of a large, a relatively large uh, student population. And you'll notice that in terms of the race and ethnicity breakdown, it's actually not very different. Um, so the breakdown of Hispanic and non-Hispanic um, residents, uh, whether you're looking at the entire population or just the student population is, is the same. Um, I would say the, the biggest difference is among your total population, um, the white non-Hispanic population of the, the whole town at 87% is, is a bit of a larger share than the student population at 81%. But otherwise you can see the demographics are not, there's not a huge um, shift. We also wanted to look at income. And sometimes you might hear references to what's called household income versus family income. And we wanted to look at family income. Household income is still important. But again, to get a sense of the kind of long-term um, you know, households of your community, looking at that family information is a bit more helpful. Um, and so what you can see, uh, the, the blue color on the left of each of those um, uh, graphs is from 2011. And then the kind of golden color in the middle is 2016. And then that maroon is 2021. So you can see um, on, the, on the far left is Plymouth. And the, the median family income uh, for Plymouth has not risen much in that 10-year period compared to the county and New Hampshire. So when we hear about how challenging these rising housing costs are, it really, I think, is going to impact your community probably more than what the county is seeing uh, based on that median family income. Um, also looking at income, uh, just to kind of give you a sense of, of what that looks like regionally, 
So for, um, these are actually based on the, the county. HUD uh, releases income limits uh, based on area median income each year. And so I know this is a lot of numbers, so what I've done on the next slide is kind of isolated just one particular column for you to look at for the county. And so for a household size of four, um, those uh, earning what's called, you know, 80% uh, of the area median income, for example. Uh, for your county, that's about $75,000 a year. And that's somewhat in line with what we saw for the median family income for your community. Um, but, you know, when you're, then when you get up to, you know, 100% area median income, it's significantly higher than uh, what we saw for, for Plymouth. Um, almost done here, I promise. Uh, so for the housing stock, um, we wanted to kind of look at where the units are and what types of structures are your unit breakdown. And so um, for, for Plymouth, compared to the county and the state, um, I would say there's, there's fewer, um, fewer of your units are in single family uh, detached homes uh, compared to the county and the state, but it's still the predominant um, uh, housing type. Um, you have a, you know, compared to the, uh, the county and the state, you definitely have more, you can see in the five to nine units per structure, you have a higher percentage than the county and state. So we also saw, you know, a, a bigger makeup of renters in Plymouth, which is not surprising. Um, so about 45% uh, of uh, households in Plymouth are renter households uh, compared to the county and New Hampshire. And that's not surprising with all of the off-campus uh, housing. So, um, oh, that slide got a little out of order there. I'm actually gonna skip ahead to um, the, the market trends. So one thing that we heard quite a bit was housing costs getting you know, higher and higher. It's getting harder and harder for people who work in your community to be able to buy a home um, or even rent if they, if they want to rent. But it's, get, it's very hard to get into your community. We heard a lot about this perception that, you know, especially after COVID, uh, you know, wealthier people are moving into the community, buying up homes driving up housing costs and so forth. Um, and so the, the blue line on that line graph there is um, over a 10 year period, the, um, the median sales price for single family homes in Plymouth. You can see for the entire state, it's actually, it's been more of an increase, but it's still gone up um, quite a bit in, in the 10 year period within your community. So I'm sure you may have had a lot of questions in there. Um, and we are gonna ask that if you have questions, just to, to kind of jot them down. We do have a question and, co and comment period at the end of the evening. We just really wanna kind of protect the breakout group time because that's the most important thing this evening is to hear from you. Um, so I am going to explain the uh, procedure for the breakout groups and then um, we'll kind of direct you around the room where to go. I will say we have uh, quite a, a large group tonight, which is awesome. So one thing I'm gonna ask when we move to the breakout groups is if you are a member of the um, housing steering committee um, to when you're doing your facilitating or note taking, if you're able to stand, um, that would be great to keep seats available uh, for our other participants. We also have a lot of chairs um, in the back for people to be able to kind of pull up as well if you're more comfortable um, in a seating like that. Um, so we'll just, we'll make sure everyone has room and is comfortable. Uh, Tyler, as we are shifting into breakout groups, I do think um, as people are moving, we may want to move the tables a bit so that if people do want to bring up chairs, they have a little more room. So we'll see about maybe kind of pushing some of these aside. Um, okay. so. Breakout group discussion norms. Your facilitators are going to kind of review these with you, but we are asking, you know, first of all, that you share your name before speaking. You have name tags, that's wonderful, but please, um, you know, if someone might not be able to read it, just please say who you are before you speak. Uh, be respectful when others are speaking, so, you know, not interrupting, um, really listening, uh, and so forth giving others a chance to contribute to the conversation. So if you have a lot to say and you have already spoken a lot, maybe just kind of pause and see if anyone else is waiting before continuing to contribute. Um, a big one, after you leave today, we'd love it if you kind of share the lessons you learned from your group. But uh, if there are any kind of personal stories that people share, you know, that should kind of stay within your group. Um, 
accept and expect a, a lack of closure. You're, you're not going to agree with everybody in your group tonight on every topic, and that's okay. That's why we want to bring all these voices together so people can hear from each other. Um, and then please respect the diverse voices of your fellow group members. So uh, we're really kind of listening to each other and um, welcoming different uh, perspectives. So in a moment, We'll have a, a, a little transition here for those of you who maybe weren't able to indicate where you live or sign in, leave your email. Um, you're, you're, I'm going to ask you to go to the table number that matches the number written on the upper right corner of your meeting agenda. And don't move yet. Uh, and hopefully it's, hopefully it's not totally skewed in a way that I messed this up. We'll see. Um, but before you move, um, so facilitators are going to guide you through several questions, um, and note takers are going to capture your responses on chart paper. Please, if the note taker doesn't capture something you said correctly, just let them know, because we really want to make sure we have good notes from each group. Um, and again, if you think of questions, we ask you to just kind of jot them down um, and hold until the questions and comments, period. So that said, um, group one, um, we're going to see what happens here. That's going to be over here with uh, John, Chris, and Matt, um, Matt Yeaton. Um, group two, Tyler, where's our group two? Oh, Tyler, this has a number one on it. Well, I did a bad job. OK, well, <laughs> so, so this, is, this is two. Um, this is group three, four, So calling all facilitators, um, we're going to ask the facilitator to come up and tell us all one thing that everybody wants you to agree on, and one thing where people want to disagree. And you can pick from anything you want on the list, but one area of agreement, one area of disagreement. Yeah, what, what we start with, and then I'd say. Um, I, I think you can pick up people. So are they going to go up to there, or are you going to go to them? I think, why don't I walk around? Okay, sure. I can be MC. Okay. Oh, can, can there be a really nice note-taker volunteer to write these things down? One of my wonderful note-takers, like Tyler. Thanks, Tyler. I, I can feel that. <laughs> <laughs> Great job, Tyler. Oh, right. Thank you. So we will start with table five. So we had quite a bit of agreement that the inventory is just too low. Most of the folks that are working in, or a lot of people that are working in Plymouth are having to find affordable housing outside of the community of Plymouth. Very little disagreement. It was um, pretty similar views throughout this, uh, this group here. Very good. Very good, thank you. Maybe we'll go to this people next, except you're up there. So. Oh, no, um, but Rebecca, who was a fabulous facilitator. So again, this group agreed on a lot of things. I think the biggest thing we agreed on is we're missing affordable housing for rent, purchase, and to age into. Um, I think where we disagreed were a lot of our solutions, so thinking about how we, you know, intensification of development with how and where um, and the methods in which that happened. Thank you. So again, we didn't have a lot of disagreement. I think we were all in agreement that we need a wide range of housing, uh, both starter housing, um, uh, worker housing of various income levels uh, and, and price points, uh, as well as, uh, as you just pointed out, aging into, um, as you get older, downsizing. And, and possibly even condominiums, something that you don't have to do the same upkeep uh, as a full-blown house in the yard. So um, we have a lot of agreement on that. A lot of agreement on that. Thank you. You. Yes. Are you speaking? Speaking. Speaking. Yeah, so. <laughs> so we're having a disagreement over this one. <laughs> We also had a lot of agreement, uh, like Brian just said, on the needs and, and the different uh, types of housing. 
We have a lot of discussion on wages and childcare and some of those uh, barriers that are creating some of those um, dilemmas that um, are, are uh, generating uh, some of this. Um, and then we have a, a, at times have a lack of consensus uh, as to the density maybe of housing um, and how much to maybe look at the village commercial zone for housing and then that equates to parking. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We've heard so much about parking. <laughs> oh. Sorry to be the one to say that. <laughs> so I will also echo that we have a lot of agreement. Um, but the one issue that came up over and over again in the structure, broadly understood, roads, um, water and sewer, all, the whole nine yards of infrastructure came up again and again. Um, but we did have broad disagreement. A minor disagreement we were talking about was the benefits of tax incentives for more housing versus the ever-present tax burden that we always talk about. Um, and as far as who was not being served, we were talking about seniors, um, workforce, and middle-income families. Thank you so much. One table. Are you I would say much like everybody else, we all agree pretty consistently. Uh, there was some discussion, but no, I no one disagreed about anything specifically. Um, much like everybody else, it's the housing. A little bit more a variety of housing we talked about. We also talked about a little bit more, so, like, it's a little more sustainable in terms of construction and the ability because we don't want to tax our, our current infrastructure and how can we be more sustainable with the building infrastructure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Alexis, I think you probably want to go over next steps. Uh, thank you. Yeah, we're not done. <laughs> thank you so much, everybody, uh, for that report out. And just to reassure you, if you feel like um, some topic that was discussed wasn't reflected in that report out, we will be processing all of these notes um, and kind of writing a, a meeting summary of the the themes that that we heard. Um, so I really appreciate your discussions and your input. That was really helpful. Um, and so I'm just going to move on to talk about the next steps for the project. Um, so what's coming next? There's going to be a, a housing needs survey that will be launching um, most likely uh, mid to late April. So I would say stay tuned for an April uh, launch. The Housing Steering Committee um, and consultant team are going to be working hard on finalizing that for you. Um, but there will be information posted about that online. Right now we have the next community meeting scheduled for June 7th, tentatively if that changes we'll of course make sure everybody knows, uh, but we'll be you know, further in the process at that point, much further with you know, having really conducted the needs assessment at that point and really looked at your zoning and other regulations to see what the barriers are that could potentially be addressed. So we'll have uh, a lot more kind of information for discussion at that meeting as well. Tonight we really wanted to learn from you. Uh, and then um, just to also get information, if you didn't leave your email address on the sign-in sheet and you want to you know, make sure you jot it down before you leave, um, we will kind of be compiling those to make sure you know, when the survey is ready or wh when we have the, the meeting uh, formally scheduled for the 7th that you will get that information by email. Um, and then lastly, for project updates, we put this on your agenda. There's a little QR code up top um, that takes you to the project page. Uh, it's super easy to find though, and staff is doing a really great job with this project page. Um, so if you go to the, you know, the town's website, right on the top of the page there's a, a projects um, uh, drop down menu, and the housing study is right in the middle, so you can click uh, and get to that URL that I have typed up there that way as well. So those are kind of all the ways that you can be you know, kept aware of what's going on in this process. Um, 
The other thing that we just wanted to make sure uh, we got from you, if possible, I know you've already worked so hard tonight, but um, we just have this uh, little handout we distributed. If you didn't get one, let me know. But we really want to hear from you. Uh, is there anything that you learned tonight that, that surprised you, um, whether that was in your conversations or in the presentation? Um, and then also, the, a big one is, what questions do you still have that you'd like us to make sure we uh, come ready to answer at the next meeting in June. Uh, I didn't think to leave a place for your contact information on this, but if you, uh, you know, need, if you want to kind of follow up about, about your question, you can certainly leave that as well on here. But otherwise, we'll plan on kind of looking at the questions that are asked and making sure we are ready to respond uh, in June. So those are the next steps. Um, we are going to open um, uh, with John's assistance for questions and comments. Um, and you know this can kind of concludes the uh, presentation and group activity. So if you have to scoot out, that's OK. Um, but we would love it if you did the ticket to leave. Um, and the, uh, there's a drop box for them on the table over there, the silver box over there. Or you can just leave it at your table, and we'll, we'll pick it up. Uh, so I'm going to turn it over to, to John. Thank you so much. And thank you so much. So if anyone does have further, um, Scott? Just uh, as a strategic priority on the board this year, we're really opening up a lot of communications and transparency. So one thing Dan and I are working on, Dan Salzer from Emmy Baker TV, is a newsletter. But what we're going to do is you'll be able to submit your email address to the town. And anytime we have notifications, an update on the housing project or whatever it may be, we're going to be pushing that out to those email addresses. Something that we haven't done in the past, but um, a strategic priority of the board, and something that Dan is currently working on. So we are hope to have that up and running by the first part of May um, is our goal. So look forward to an email coming out or to a notification to submit your emails to the town so that we can push out important information to you. Thank you, Scott and Dan. Yeah, so at this point, if anyone has any further questions or comments for us this evening, um, you are invited to um, speak and uh, address those concerns. And if you do want to speak, please identify yourself and ask your question or make your comment. And I'll ask you to try to keep it to, it's a big group, um, try to keep it to three minutes or under. Um, are there any questions or comments? I'll go first. I'm not yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Uh, my name is Charlie Barker. Uh, I've been in Plymouth for, I don't know, 30 something years uh, and live in the village. And we were discussing at our table um, how Plymouth is. And it's hard to grasp that. But I was a PSC alum. And my wife was here, and we stayed because we loved Plymouth. And for some of the people that were lucky enough to grow up here, that I see uh, since they were little kids and have been here for 50, 60, 70 years, uh, how fortunate they are. And I was lucky enough to find Plymouth and how much I really loved it. So this discussion about housing, I guess my comment would be is, we're talking about housing, but we have to also include how we want it to be, how that feel is. And to sound a little snotty is I really like the way Plymouth is. And I think it's been like that for, for decades uh, and how welcoming it is and how nice it was to let my kids play out until the streetlights came home and I didn't worry about them, at least Sort of, um, you know, because there was always people around. That, hey, knock it off, or what? You know what I mean? It was, it was just a really nice community. So as we talk about housing, I hope people will keep in the background how nice Plymouth is, and and that sort of community that we want to keep. So that that's my two cents. Thank you. Great comment. Any, uh, anyone else have any comments or questions? Yes? Um, hello, I'm Peter Hedenreich. I'm a freshman at Phillips Review High School. And the very reason I came here tonight is because I'm working on an English project on affordable housing. Now, I've been doing 
of, of working and focusing on the math to figure out if there's any way possible in which affordable housing can be more profitable in terms of tax income than um, large, more expensive homes. And while doing the math, I found that the only way that it can come close to actually being more profitable is with the is with tiny homes. And then, not like the super tiny homes you see on TV, but small homes that will fit um, three, four people, maybe even just two, three small homes, These those rather small homes. But currently there's an ordinance which happened which says that you can't build those homes. Um, I don't know all the exact details, but I feel like with my math, that is the only way that I can see it. And I'd like to know how many people would support or not support that to see if I should maybe go through with looking more into that for my project. How many square feet are you talking in your home? Um, generally, like by small, I mean 1,000 or less square feet. Small homes. Are you referring to like a community of small homes? With um, basically, I'm focusing on also land area. Basically, if you fill a, the same area that one big home would take up with a community of smaller homes, it would come extremely, extremely close to making that up in tax income. And that many more people. Yeah, not many people here. I'd like to see if, in general, people would support that idea. Yes. Love it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well, I'll just take a moment to say I'm floored. That was incredible. And keep up the fantastic work. And I'm curious to see where you go. <laughs> Judy, that's <a> picture of Lloyd. Hire him now. <laughs> yes. Oh, hi. Sarah Holland. I'm a business owner in town. Um, we talked a little bit at our table about not only the need to have all different types of development in town, including rentals, but a lot more ownership opportunity. And I think when folks own property, they feel safe and secure. They can go on to do amazing things, and they have um, the respect and responsibility to take care of the community around them. Thank you. Any further questions, comments? Um, well, I want to thank Judy and, and everyone on um, Barrett Planning Group for a fantastic meeting. You've thank been a you. pleasure to work with. Thank you. Um, and I think that's all for our business this evening, right? I think so. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, if any members of the planning board want to make a motion to adjourn. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Okay. We are adjourned. Have a great night, everyone, and thank you so much for coming.